Hey there, it's me. It's Juliet, you know, host of Bachelor Party and Jam Session. And I want to tell you about one of my favorite shows on our network. That would be Higher Learning. Back in February, I ran a short excerpt from one of their episodes on here because it is hosted by Rachel Lindsay, and she was talking specifically about Chris Harrison. So I thought it was a conversation you guys might like. And if you did, I implore you to listen to their podcast more regularly. You know, go ahead and follow it on Spotify. They dissect the biggest topics in black culture, politics, and sports. And last week, they covered the repercussions of racism, unvaccinated in the NBA, and much more. You can find Higher Learning every Tuesday and Friday on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says authenticity guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay authenticity guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. So you can I grab real quick? Yeah! Hi. Hey, what's up? Don't be nervous. So, yeah, no, no. So, I know we've hung out um, the last couple of days. Wait, we're standing right here? Yeah, no, we have to do this fast. Oh, you know, wait. Yeah, we hung out the last couple of days. It's been great. Yeah. And I actually care about you. Yeah. But uh, James is waiting right now, so we're about to bounce back to the SD. Are you <laughs> me right now? No. Hey, look, the boys from your SD. I'll get your number. I hate you. I hate him. I hate him. Are you with me right now? You're, you're kidding. This is a joke. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. I'm here with Callie Curry. Callie, we made it. We made it to the end of paradise. Congrats. Seemed like a marathon, to be honest. Oh my God. And the last <laughs> stretch was really hard. Really hard. I want to venture to say, I think this is the worst, not worst, but most boring episode of any season of any Bachelor franchise. Like, I cannot believe this was three hours long. Are they always this long? No, they're usually yeah, two. The, the three hour epi- episodes did not go well. And like a cumulative 60 seconds of like makeout sounds. I hate the makeout sounds. It grossed me out so bad. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, we, we don't need to go over my kissing <laughs> thoughts. We know but where I, you stand. I, but I agree. Do not like the makeout sounds. It just was so dragged out. And just like really cheesy. We're going to play a game th- this week, which is kind of like a version of stock up, stock down. I'm going to call it, was it worth it? And we're going to go through every person who appeared on the show and ask, was it worth it for them to go to paradise? Um, yes. Can we start with Kaylin and Dean who came in this week to like, <laughs> I don't know what they were there for, but like sure. Kaylin and Dean, was it worth it for them to appear for like a cumulative 45 seconds with really scripted lines? I'm going to say yes. Because they got paid for it and they probably got a little vacay and legitimately had 10 minutes of work. Did seem really easy. I thought it was just weird that they're like the couple they called in because they had such like a weird time on Paradise. Rocky time. I don't remember Dean's first trip to Paradise, but he alluded to it being really rough. Do you remember it? I thought both times were rough, if I'm remembering correctly. But yeah. And the second time he came on, everyone was telling her like not to take him seriously. And then yes. didn't they just end up leaving together? Yeah, they just left the beach together. Yeah, so and it's it- also like weird because it's like not a couple that was like successful at the end to have their at the end. I know. They didn't get engaged on the show. but Like they have Jade and Tanner. Now. They probably couldn't come because they got three fucking kids. Also, Jade may, yeah. may have been pregnant at the time. I feel like she's always pregnant. They must have sex a lot. I'm happy for them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just that's a like, very rapid succession children. But yes. And also that was the season when Kaylin had the weird text with Blake. 
and then Blake posted them on Instagram. I don't oh, know if yeah. you recall that, but it was like really bizarre that he did that. Anyway, I thought it was so strange <laughs> that they were there. I remember I now. Say, I think you make a good point, though. They probably got paid, got to go to Mexico. Very little work in and out. We remember who they are. They both looked great, I thought. Also, I don't know about Kaylin, but I don't think Dean really cares that much about like the spotlight. I feel no. like he just wants to like live off the earth. Yeah, um, I, definitely. I mean, they live in a van, literally. Yeah, but but I feel like he's like, sure, why not just make a quick buck, go to Mexico, and then I can get back on the canyon tomorrow. <laughs> Walk a tightrope across, you know, something crazy. I want to correct myself. I think they actually just bought a house in Las, the Las Vegas area, which, okay. It's like near her family or something. And then he's his family's in Denver. Mm. Also, I feel like that's like an area where he ventures a lot. Yeah, like you can go hiking. The, the Utah, parks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all that. Anyway, I was surprised to see them. I really I wasn't sure who would be coming in this episode, but they came in after... They came in and gave everyone like an ultimatum, which was basically like, go to the fantasy suites or break up. Or go up. home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people opted to go home. I was surprised by that too. I thought everyone was going to opt to go home except for the three that did not go home. And I really thought Becca and Thomas would stay. Like, I get it. Kind of. Like, I can get, I can understand her being like, I don't want to get engaged since obviously like, you know, PTSD. Hasn't gone well. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also like, y'all are grown ups. Like, have another day, go have sex, you know, do what well, you want to do. Yeah. But I mean, I assume that most of these couples had had sex already. Although I liked how Joe confirmed that he and Serena did. He was like, our relationship is definitely at the next level now. It's like, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> but um, with Becca, you can't blame her. I mean, she, she's been through this a bunch of times, it didn't yeah. go well. And I I don't know. I I wouldn't want to like put myself on front street like that again either. But I was surprised by Thomas's tears. I didn't see that breakdown coming. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Fair enough. (laughs) The other other thing I didn't like about Thomas is because he was wearing really bad jorts. I do not support men uh, in jorts. I'm not a big jorts person either, especially having gone to the University of Florida where jorts are rampant. But I love... Thomas, we all know. Mm. The breakdown was odd. I just like was like part of me was like, is this real? Is it real? I guess it's real. Like I I the I whole think- thing really freaked me out. And then part of me was like, you know, I can't be mad at a guy for like showing his feelings, right? Like I don't want to be that person. Yeah. But wasn't a turn on. I think it's because he kind of crumbled. Listen, I like a, I like a, a man. I like a person who emotes. I like, you know, like to see that a, a relationship means something, but he just sort of like completely crumbled and it was just not appealing. It has nothing to be to do with his gender. In my opinion. I also hated when he was like, just let me go. I know if you love, if you care about me, let me go. <laughs> I was like, you're getting in a freaking car to go to the same hotel. Let's yeah. let's calm down here. See you at the airport. Probably. Um, the only thing I can think of is that he's probably not been told no a lot. I think about that all the time with these really hot people. Like they're just yeah. not used to rejection. Regular people. We know what it's like. It still stings every time, <laughs> but at least, you know, it passes. It's only temporary. Yeah. It doesn't feel good, but we have experience with it. <laughs> yeah. It passes. <laughs> just got to remember it's all, all temporary. It's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm like, I, I mean, this is like, this isn't your last conversation. You can, you're leaving the show and you can literally talk to her in 30 minutes. You're off the show now. Well, they're still together. That's the great yeah. news. They got back together. They realized they missed each other. A lot of cute, yeah. a lot of cute stuff with them in the in like subtle Instagram hints in the in the months since. So yeah, this is now basically three months ago. So I'm I'm happy for them. Yeah, I think they're a cute couple. So me too, me too. My favorite breakup though was Ed and McKenna. I thought that was like I thought she was so funny. <laughs> I also like didn't know that Ed was a character. I actually had heard that like he's like funny in person and like. Remember he like had wine with Chris Harrison one night? Like he thought he was oh, going yeah. to Tasha's room. <laughs> yeah. I think he is like a funny dude. Yeah, I thought that breakup was great from both parties. Me like, too. Ed was like, you know, well, we, this is our chance. And McKenna was like, uh, no. He reminded me of like a high schooler in a teen comedy who's like just looking to get laid. Like he just like clearly really wanted to have sex. That's yeah. And I think he was just like, we'll find out if she's down or not. 
Um, also, I was thinking about this now that you said that. I feel like they probably shouldn't have done the rose ceremony. They probably should have had them come, Dean and Kaylin come in, say that, and then they decide from there, like, do I have someone here that I want to couple up, up with or I want to go home? Because, like, what was the point of getting a rose and then going home the next day? It was, like, you know, an extra 30 minutes and you could have saved some people some heartbreak. Yeah, especially because I, I was... I was just bummed out and kind of uncomfortable with watching Ed choose McKenna over Natasha and Aaron choose Tia over Chelsea. Chelsea I just felt, yeah. yeah, it was just like such a such a um, unfortunate and predictable turn of events for the Bachelor franchise. And I just was like, why put them through that then? Like, because all those people then went home the next day. Like, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think that was unnecessary. Also, I will say though. I- the way Tia handled Aaron's breakup was great. Oh, my God. I do love Tia. So Aaron and James chose each other. I also love friendship. So I thought that was cute. <laughs> Even though I don't I don't like either of them. I don't want either of them in my life. I wouldn't want to know them. I thought that was actually really cute. I, I love when people find each other as friends. And I thought Tia was so funny. I love her. She was like, wait, are you for real? Is this happening? Okay. All right. And then she just like started laughing. I feel like some people would have actually gotten mad. And I felt like she handled it like appropriately. I'm going to miss Tia. She was fantastic. She's actually my top. Was this worth it? Emphatic. Yes. Cause she's someone who totally was off my radar. And now I'm like, I really like Tia. She's great. Yeah. I totally forgot about Tia in general. Me too. And, and then it- she came back. I remembered her instantly, but remembered her as like being kind of like a little stiffer, I guess. Yeah. And she Like her, her personality really like shined. She seemed goofy and fun and didn't take herself too seriously, which is kind of like exactly what you want at a Bachelor in Paradise person. Yeah. yeah. And I, I really, really enjoyed that. Let's go through the rest of the people and just ask, was it worth it? Okay. Number one, Natasha. Was it worth it for her to go to Paradise? Absolutely. Because it- to get all those followers? She literally went from making $5,000 a post to like seventy five. It's worth it. Is that how it goes? That's uh, price No, range? I mean, I don't, I don't even know how much she how many followers she has. But yeah, essentially. Well, she, I think she went from like 80,000 ish to around like 475. So de- huge depending. Gain. Yeah. Depending on engagement, she probably went from like $2,000 a post, maybe less if she's at 80 to 400,000, like probably up to like 25. Maybe. Jesus. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now I know why people want to be influencers. Such easy money. Totally depends on engagement because apparently based on tiktok a lot of bachelor people have horrible engagement i believe that also think people are known to like buy followers and stuff that's also they, yeah they all hawk the same products like what do i need yeah. piper 10 for what do i need like demi 15 for 15 percent off like yeah so it just it kind of depends but like that could be like within a range of jump which i wow. would ass- which i would assume if that's what she does full time which i don't know if it is or if, if it isn't but she used to be an event planner and producer, I believe. But I think she has tra- like transitioned to doing more um, influence Influencing, work, so. yeah. So I think it was worth it that way. She ended up being like, you know, a sweetheart to every- everyone loves Natasha. And like, I don't know. I don't see how. I mean, yeah, it might have been like a little rough on her mentally. But I don't know if it actually was or not. Like, I don't know her to know if she like actually cared about the whole situation or not. Yeah. I was, I was just, I just hope she finds love. Just seem like she really wants it. I don't know. The final like rejection from Ed was just so unnecessary. I'm pissed on her behalf. Next. Uh, who's next? Brendan. Was it worth it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Brendan is definitely like the biggest In- loser of the season, especially now. All these guys are fuckheads. Like so many, just like All asshole of them. moves. So, so many. I don't think what he did was like that much worse than a lot of the other people. I think- uh, and, and and by the way, people did just as bad or worse or or people did the exact same thing he did and, now- and weren't burnt to a cross. So not only was he burnt to a cross, but also ended up losing his girlfriend. So like uh, and followers. So there's nothing. I don't know what positive came of it for him. It's just an absolute just crash from from heaven for him. Like he was like anointed. Everyone loved him. He's so handsome. And then just came crashing down. And I, I don't even know like what he should do now. It's probably hard for him to go out, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's not, not like he's like Brad uh, Pitt level, I, but still. Yeah, I will say like he's still just like a good looking guy. So I'm sure he'll be fine socially. I think it'll be, I don't well, know what he, what does he do? I mean, I don't know where you go from here. 
He's a roofer and a model. I think he probably can't move out of like his day job as quickly as he thought, but I'm sure he'll figure it out. I so Piper, was it worth it for her? Mm, no. I think sneaky, yes. Piper is definitely way more famous than she was before. Yeah. More famous, not more followers. No. But does that matter? But her loss wasn't as big as Brendan's. She's like kind of no. stagnant. Yeah. Not as bad as Brendan, but like she also lost Brendan, which like maybe they know, actually would have been a good couple. I know. She's so young though. She's 23. Like she's got plenty of time to rebound from this. I don't know. I think it's kind of I a think, wash, but yeah, I, I think it's a I wash. Ho- I hope they get back together. I'm just like, if you're, if you know you're going to go through this, I hope you're with each other. Like make it work. I'm, guys. I'm actually going to call it a loss for her. Not worth it because she said she had to take off time from work to come do this. And so like she took off time, quarantined and was on the beach for two days. So not worth it. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I don't know. It's just, I just hope they get back together. If they get back together, then I'm like, it's fine. At least they, yeah. they made it more work of together. a wash. Yeah. yeah. Next Joe grocery store, Joe, 1 million percent worth so it. So fucking worth it. This guy. <laughs> oh my God. Even though I'm not a fan, I understand him and Serena are cute. They do seem really into each other. Yeah. I think that he, they, I think they actually like want to get married. I know she did seem genuinely shocked, but he, I just can't believe he's become like, this like voice of like wisdom on this franchise. Yeah. It's shocking. And I, I don't, I, it's not for me. It, I don't take in his word to be wise, but it's fucking weird. I like him. I also like listened to one of his podcasts, which I wouldn't have if he didn't come on the show. And he was good. I know. Um, Huge win for the Bachelor Nation podcast yeah. network. I think he's like, seems like pretty genuine as a person. I also like really, as much as I hated this episode, like, weirdly you could tell that they like actually are serious about this super smiley i mean they're so smiley together also like serena's crying seemed real like it wasn't there didn't seem like any like play up which yeah. usually you can tell there's like a bit of a you know yeah i also um, i appreciated that she was like i'm wearing my clothes thank you very much when they were in bed I thought oh yeah kind of cute <laughs> i also think that she I, like their vow, va- not vows, whatever the fuck, whatever their little speeches. I thought those were really cute. Um, and I also think they both looked really nervous. And then when she, when he said that Kendall came down, you could see that she was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like it all just seemed real. Complete win for Joe. Not only did he maybe find his wife, but he also got over an ex, which she was clearly hurting him. And he, I mean, I don't know what his follower account is, but like, People seem to love People him. People love him. I'm I'm on an island of anti Joe. People I, I'm enjoy shocked. Me eventually. I'm actually shocked he wasn't announced as host. That's how much people like him. I know. <laughs> I I think that he was very specifically given like the edit that he got. Oh, I just checked tried to check his followers' Instagrams down. Sorry, people. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's better for me. I think I'd be happier with that Instagram. Anyway. I think he got the edit that he got also to promote his podcast. So now it's like people who like Joe, it's like, okay, great. We got more of him for you. Go listen to clickbait and he'll be right there. I I just think that like, it's bizarre. He has got so little to offer. It seems like he was reading canned lines, but I guess it worked. I'm happy for him and Serena. Yeah, me too. So, I mean, I like don't want to hear from them again, but like good stuff guys. Happy for you. (laughs) I'll probably like check their Instagram every once in a while. I liked when she said, like, my parents are going to kill me or my family is going to kill me because I definitely think that's true. Like, she seems like she's close with them and getting engaged to someone they yeah. haven't met after a month and they're not there. But I want I, I need like a of all the shows to have an after show. It should be paradise. Like, I can't 100 percent. How is there not a reunion? It should be a reunion. Missed opportunity. Bachelor Nation. Maybe we can try to host it ourselves on like an Instagram live. Just I would love everyone. Actually, can we just like have a podcast where we like, you know, file them in one at a time? Sure. Just five we'll minutes. Some, Give us an yeah. update. And How we'll have some overlaps with some people. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. It's like there's two chairs at all times. Like one person yeah. leaves, new person comes in, two guest yeah. chairs. And we can pick the order. I think that's something we should work on. <laughs> that'd be awesome if, if Warner Brothers doesn't steal the idea for clickbait, but we'll see. <laughs> so Kendall, was it worth it for her? No. I don't know. She's got to be over Joe now. There's nothing. I mean, it's painful to watch that happen. She looked dumb. I guess so. I don't know. The the edit, they made her look like so like 
It was inexplicable. I, I didn't like it. I don't like how they made her look. Because I, I also would say, like, based on her past seasons, she comes across as, like, a pretty, like, strong, independent. And, like, this made her look like... They purposely tried to make it look like she was chasing him the entire fucking time. Yeah, and they also... I think that it seemed like he really, like, lectured her on the way out when he was like, why did you wait until now? And I'm over it. Like, she did... De- but got- then she came back and had another pointless five minutes on the show. I, I actually, I, I actually, like press rewind and like rewatched it because I was like I missed what was the point of her coming and then I rewatched it and I was like oh okay no point just closure I wonder if she wanted to do that or they told her to I'm sure they told her to no one wants to do that but even that like why are you doing that you look dumb like it's it's like literally the worst moment for you to walk out there and have that conversation like just let him get engaged I thought it was I thought it was odd and my first thought was like here go the producers again (laughs) I thought it was weird. He kept referencing like the, like his first paradise experience too. Like I, I understand like, you know, that engagement was like, obviously didn't go as planned and whatever. I don't know. It, whatever. Kendall. It's a wash. I don't know. Wash. She's another one who I hadn't really thought about. So I'm like, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your new year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code VISIBLE24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Next, Mari. Worth it or not worth it? I think it's almost a wash. Uh, she seems to be obsessed with Kenny. So like happy for her. I guess she like got engaged. Also like really reminded me of how pretty she was. So she's got that. She's on my TikTok constantly. So I think she is sure. doing well influencer wise. But I also think she did look a little crazy um, there for, for a few episodes. I'm just a little worried. There was a rumor on Domois that Kenny is like dating someone else, even though they said they're still together. So I don't know. Oh, I didn't see that. I'm just so confused. I just don't get it. Like, what is their connection? Is it purely sexual? Do they like what's going on there? I just don't understand. I don't know. We didn't see like a lot of deep combos from them. No, not I at feel all. like we got I, deep combos from Joe and Serena and Riley and Marissa. So out of the three oh, couples, yeah. like. I don't know. It's going to end badly for, for Mari and Kenny. There's no way they're together forever. So. I'm going to go with she shouldn't have gone on. Only plus, though, is like she should have been on The Bachelor for longer and got more screen time. So at least she got finally got it. I mean, she was on, I felt like on The Bachelor, she was like in and out pretty quick. And everyone was kind of confused because she's so pretty. I mean, I was super confused, but whatever. Kenny, worth it? Yeah, I think it was worth it for Kenny. I mean, like, I don't know what he ended up like, you know, getting to be with two really hot girls. Uh, got a, a month vacation a, on the beach for as a 40 year old like chilling got engaged might have not been part of his plan also this past episode again although I did not like it 
I thought he came across like really well. Like he was, you know, he wasn't like, it, actually this whole season he came across well to me. Like he told the truth constantly. He was never telling one person one thing, another person another thing. He seemed like pretty aware of like, hey, when I was your age, I had a lot of life to live still. And like, I don't want to trap you into this. Like, I just think he said everything that like a normal person would. Yeah, totally. He, he's acting like it was like normal relationship. Yeah, which I personally, like he's not my type physically, although clearly, I wonder what he looks like in person because like the women seem- There's got to be something to him. Yeah. Yeah, women seem to love him. But I thought his personality came across great. He came across normal. He treated everyone like pretty respectfully, even when things got really fucking crazy. Because like, I feel like a lot of men probably wouldn't hand, have handled like cake being thrown in the fire, Demi going off. Like he had a lot going on at one point. <laughs> it's true. And he and just he stayed handled, like really calm. Yeah. Like, totally he placid. handled it really well. <laughs> I know. And when there was conflict, he was pretty well spoken. I think the biggest winner from Kenny going on this show is like anyone who's currently 40 and like, just like wants to feel good about their future. I feel like Kenny made being 40 seem great. He was just like, he really you, can, you can look good. You can find love. It's just like, it's not that old. I don't know. Kenny was just really representing for the 40 year olds. Yeah. He made 40 look like 30. Like, Hey, I can be here. I'm yeah. not insecure about my age whatsoever. Or my and, body. Well, I mean, yeah, his body was better than most of the 30 year olds. Um, Definitely. Yeah, I thought that there wasn't really any L that Kenny took except for getting engaged if he didn't want that. Getting engaged is so crazy. I, I can't, under no circumstances would I actually get engaged on this television show. I, I mean, think Riley and Serena had a point when they both were like, ah, even though I like really like you and I think that you are my person, like you still have to like meet my family. Yeah, and like live together. See if like you can bear yeah. each other's annoying habits and whatever. Or like work like live a normal life and see yeah. if it works. Yeah. Like do your lives sync up like all this yeah. shit. <laughs> I know. It's just so, it's just so, so ridiculous. As I was watching, I was just like, this should just be an hour wrap up and then an hour reunion. And like, just know why do they have to have engagements? No viewer is going to be pissed if they just like decide to leave the beach together and then we get to like check in on them three months later or whatever. Like who's going to be mad about that? It's just a really dumb idea. Yeah. It doesn't work. Next. Marissa, obvious, yes. Yeah, I mean... Oh, wow, just not so obvious to you. No, 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 no. It's an obvious yes because it's like no one really knew who she was. She's really pretty. We got to see her personality. Her and Riley seem to like actually really like each other, so she's probably engaged still. It's an all-around yes for me. I just like... I don't know if I watched it and were like, oh, I really want to see more of Marissa. But some of the yeses that I gave, I don't feel the same way. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like for Marissa, because she was barely on TV before, this is just value add. Plus she found a, a boyfriend, so that's great. But I, because like we didn't know who she was, she now is basically famous and she wasn't at all before. So I feel like yeah. that's good. Also, like, again, I had no idea who she was. And when she came on the beach, I was like, whoa, who is this really pretty girl that yeah. we didn't see much of? She's amazing at doing her own makeup. Like maybe like the best ever in the history of the show because she just like, she creates a lot of different looks. Too. Makeup and hair. Yeah. She's so good at it. Um, It's really uh, impressive. I will say that she needed some of the magnesium <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the proposal. <laughs> oh my God. So sweaty. I mean, it's late June in Mexico. It's like gotta be so Somehow hot. Serena does not sweat ever. I don't know if you've noticed. Yeah, I was thinking about that actually i also noticed she didn't straighten her hair for the proposal which i liked i was like nice well that was smart yeah I'll based see. on how hot it was yeah and the humidity and everything totally yeah <laughs> she i i don't know she must be so tiny in person has to be it's like just like absolutely like pocket sized but no fat none at all <laughs> um riley uh, uh win it's a win overall but i will say i, I He's so much cheesier than I realized. <laughs> also, but I think that's who he really is. Like, yeah, a, no, it definitely is. Not in a bad way. I also thought like overall he comes across as like a pretty stand up guy. Yeah. And like playful. Oh, yeah. Playful and all that stuff. But like even him like telling Ivan like you're better than that. And I'm like, 
who the fuck has these values, Riley? Yeah. No one, no one is better than this. He seems pretty loyal to you. Like what, once he got in the relationship with Marissa, he never wavered. I was done. Not yeah. at all. How old is Ivan? I think Ivan's 29. Oh, he's not that young. How old's Riley? Like 31, I think. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm like, no 25 year old guy is better than this, but Ivan's 29. But you know, I don't know. There's probably not a lot of 29 year olds that are better than this. Should we talk about Ivan? Was it worth it for Ivan? Uh, it's tough. On the yeah. one hand, on the one hand, this definitely extends his fame. So that's good. Mm-hmm. But on the other, he was exposed to blatantly lie. And <laughs> I don't, yeah. I'm not mad about him and Alexa. Obviously, I don't care if these people find each other or whatever in the hotel. But he did screw Alexa over because then she didn't have to go on the show. Well, Alexa and Chelsea. And Chelsea, um, yeah. And Aaron. Um, I think that, like, if you delete the last hour of him, I would say yes. <laughs> and then even with the last hour, I feel like his backlash was, like, very minimal. I guess Considering so. what he actually did. Yeah. Like, what he did to me is worse than... Brandon, probably. Really? I mean, larger his, blast radius, that's for sure. I, I just feel like his lie was so blatant and it was like back to back. Like Brendan lied, right? But like, who remembers when you're lying or like stretching the truth that much, you're not going to remember every single thing that you said, right? Mm-hmm. So, like him being like, I don't remember saying two times, which I don't know. I, we never saw him say that, but he could have said that to Natasha off camera. I'm sure there's a lot he said to Natasha off camera. Like, I feel like to him, the, like in Brendan's mind, he was like, I wasn't lying to you, but was I like downplaying everything with Piper? Sure. Like I definitely played that game. Ivan, like within a 10 minute span, lied back to back and then tried to undo his, like it was like too close together where it was like cringe for me. Yeah. And then he also probably was just using Chelsea to get. Probably. To- yeah, he was just using Chelsea to, <laughs> yeah. to wait for Alexa. Like so, there was, a, it was too blatant. Ivan was just too blatant. Yeah, I think I think Brandon and Piper came off worse than Ivan in the court of public opinion because of the follower stuff. Like if we had seen anyone else's private yeah. conversations about their follower accounts, probably would dislike them as much. That because that true. was just like so unappealing, and I think that's yeah. that's why that's fair. I don't know. I think I feel like with Ivan personally, I think it's a net negative. I just think that like he. People like really liked him, similar to Brendan. And he also just seemed like he didn't really like need need this. And he just kind of comes off seeming like more immature and like more of like a fuck boy than he did before. More of a yeah, more of a fuck boy, more of a clout chaser. Um, but I don't know if it actually affected him socially. Yeah. It's small. Like See, we st- still I, hanging we still out. At, yeah, everyone. still with the bachelor's crew, was with them on Governor's Ball. Don't think his followers have been that affected he was making jokes about what he did on tiktok which i'm like brendan can't do that <laughs> yeah i know brendan's been canceled he's out yeah yeah so i'm like i don't know overall for ivan i feel like it was kind of a wash yeah i think it's a negative but i never wanted him to go on in the first place um next abigail harsh breakup at the end that truly made no sense uh yeah i i, I think it's a semi wash for her because people liked her before she came on people still like her about the same. I feel like she was really put in this like position as like a lead of the season. So like that's cool because she. I mean, we got a lot of Abigail time. I don't she know if she. I don't know. Ab- I don't know if Abigail carried that role. No, but, but I think they wanted it for her. I do think that Noah um, won. <laughs> I really like, I like Noah after. Like I think he has a great personality, and I think maybe we saw more of Abigail because of Noah. But I think Noah carried it carried it for them totally and he was a really good narrator who yeah contribute like overall like everything that was happening definitely, he's actually funny definitely a win for him yeah i like noah a lot yeah. noah and ivan now i get like why they're best friends and everything all right yeah i can see why people just like noah in general you know who i didn't miss is bennett i like kind of forgot about bennett in general oh yeah quick detour you mentioned this on the pod last thursday but it it seems even more true that dale and abigail hooked up in the winter while Dale and Claire weren't completely over yet. And Claire tagging Abigail on Instagram is one of the pettiest acts I've ever witnessed on social media. And I loved it. I didn't love it because it was her mom. It was a weird picture to do that with. (laughs) Yeah. Like if she posted like some random picture and did it, I would love it. I think it's really weird to 
post it on like a serious picture of your your mom struggling. Yeah, it's true. Next, my most emphatic, it was worth it. Taj. I love Taj. <sighs> yeah, that's just because you're obsessed with her. But <laughs> um, she's so but funny. Yeah, Are you not obsessed with her? Yeah, I mean, I like her. I think that I wish she would have stayed. Yeah, I know. Why'd she just leave? Yeah, like her her exit was just bizarre. But I liked her. I liked her commentary. But I liked her last time too. Like I think she's just a funny person. She is. She is. And she gives really good content. But it's the same version of what we got the first time, essentially. We need her on a different show. Like we yeah. need that on a non-dating show where she can really thrive. Like, I think she'd be like, great on the challenge. Yeah, that's a good call. It's she also like, looks like her legs and stuff are like pretty muscular. Her body is muscular. Yeah. I just feel like we need like a real housewife type of show where she could like play a Kathy Hilton type of role and just be funny. <laughs> <laughs> like and outrageous. Like Gosh. she probably would also travel with a box fan to Tahoe just to make sure she is comfortable. 100%. <laughs> I'm sure she, she brought one to, to paradise. Uh, I'm going to say it was a loss. Total loss. I, he didn't find anyone. He wasn't on for that long. He just came off as like a really like immature dude. And now we know that Taj made out with his uncle. Yeah. Also, like, I think it would have gone better for Trey if Thomas like went out in flames, but he didn't at all. No, no, so not at all. him and Aaron to me, like both just come across as like probably more jealous than like, you know, um, total like, L for Aaron, total L for Aaron, who, you know, I was really into. And now I just think he's like such a child and I can't stand him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy he found a friend, but like, just no, not okay. Mm, I think before paradise, you thought he was really hot. Didn't really have an opportunity on his season. And cause he got caught up in the Thomas drama and then he brought the Thomas drama again to the beach. So I'm like, did you learn from it? Doesn't look like it. Then Thomas ended up being totally fine. So I was just like, what the fuck was your problem in the first yeah. place? Uh, and then like every girl he was with left him for somebody else. Yeah. I, I mean, there isn't really like nothing good happened for Aaron. He's still good looking. Yeah. And I think at the end, it was just rude how he was so mad at Ivan for going after Chelsea. And then he immediately ditches her for Tia with like no explanation at the stupid prom. Like, what was that? I feel like the explanation is probably just wasn't told was him kind of being like, I mean, she essentially just like made out in front of Ivan in front of me. Like, how much does she actually like me? Tia is giving me some attention. Let why don't you know, she did it to me. I don't really care about doing it to her. Yeah, that's true. I guess I. I would have liked a little bit more of a discussion about it and like a confrontation, but whatever. I feel like Chelsea I, just I will got say screwed. that, yeah, Chelsea got screwed kind of because they would have left the next day anyways. But I will say the way that Chelsea handled it made her look great. Yeah. Chelsea, definitely worth it. Net positive for her. Yeah. Also, she looked great. So like, Yeah, she really did. She's beautiful. For a five minute like thing, she didn't do anything bad. And she doesn't seem like she's too upset. <laughs> she's fine. Yeah, she's totally fine. Becca. Uh, positive. I think negative. What's your case? <gasps> um, I, before this season, didn't really like, I don't know if I disliked her. She was kind of just like meh. Also, she's had like a really f- rough go. <laughs> really rough. Yeah. Um, so I thought she just came across as like a really good friend. She had more of a personality. It seemed like her and Thomas really liked each other. Even her leaving was probably like the unpopular choice. Like I'm sure the producers did not want her to leave. Like it seemed like she had like a good control over what was happening on top of like, remember like Rachel telling us that she went, but had a whole bunch of things put in place for like, if she went, she, she, I feel like she kind of learned from her past experiences and yeah. was kind of like, I'm going to, I'll do this, but I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. Um, so like, I didn't see any negative from it. I like that Becca has clearly gone through a lot of self growth. Seems like she's matured. She's like in control of her life. She seems happy. She seems fun. All that's great. I don't think I want to be known as the first lead to go to paradise. Like, I don't think that's a trail that I want to blaze. Like, I just feel like, eh, not great. Not a great look for the, for a former bachelorette, even though she was treated like royalty and she seems to have found a good, good dude who, who definitely, I, I think like 10 times out of 10, you choose Thomas over both Ari and Garrett. There's no question, but like, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just not a distinction or a record I want to hold. Mm. I, I hear like you. You're, you're really thinking about it. I re- appreciate it. You're engaging <laughs> with the ideas. <laughs> no, I hear what you're saying. I think because her 
experience was just so nuts. Like the both things that happened to her really sucked. And like, I don't, no one else is that fun. Yeah. No one else has really gone through that. I feel like she can be the first lead to go. Like it was acceptable for her to be there. Yeah, I guess. I, she seemed fun, but I also, know. I just think it made her personality so much better. Definitely. I liked been, her so I've, much more after. I've been referring to her as New Becca because she's like a new person who I actually yeah. like now. I did I like, I I like New like Becca. Her. Um, Thomas, obvious win. I mean, he, villain to hero, villain to nice guy, villain to crying. Awesome. Love Great Thomas. Time. So happy people know the real you, Thomas. <laughs> Remember who your day ones were. I, <laughs> Minus the crying, he had an almost flawless performance. Yeah, that's true. I thought he's a little bit cheesy with Becca, where he's like, "Oh, can I been looking for you?" But that's I think okay. that I think that's who he is. Also, Let's she see. might like that, so it might work. Also, can I just say, I my most of my life absolutely hated Corny. Like mm. Corny, he just turn off ever. Now that I'm older, especially like having kids, you're like. I want you to end up with the corny guy. Sure. Yeah. You want the, the, the nice one who's goofy. Yeah. 100%. Someone who's not too cool. Like Riley, totally fine. And Thomas for as being as like, you know, scripted ish that he can be. He's definitely not the cool guy. No. And he's also like, what's wrong with, with Which, speaking well? What the fuck? In what world is Thomas not the cool guy? <laughs> it's a great question. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, he's like a college athlete, super tall, hot. I like I'm, it. It's true. I like him. He's he does seem like a goofball, which I think have, is good for Becca. We have converted Juliet. Yeah, you have. Congrats. Full full blown Thomas train. Welcome. <laughs> um, we're getting down into the the less the less central characters a bit. Dr. Joe, was it Loss. worth it? Hard Loss. no. I just want to say I like really when well, he came on this pod in December. And breaking news, he's coming in on, on Thursday. And I was like, just don't go on Paradise. Like, like, you won't gain from it. And he didn't listen. And I was right. So Dr. Joe, and he even on the Almost Famous podcast with um, Ben and Ashley, he said that it was like a mixed bag. Like, it wasn't like always great or whatever. So yeah, which probably means it was worse <laughs> than he's allowed to say. Yeah, I mean, he went on the show, didn't get a real date, didn't have a real connection, was there for like a couple of days. He could have a legitimate job at home. It's just like, what are you doing? Why are you here? It's also like you're a good looking guy with a good job and you live in a good city. Like you don't need this. No, definitely doesn't. Makes me wonder why he did it. But I guess, you know, they, they all go thinking it's like, just like a fun hang on the beach. And then I think it's just like a lot more restrictive than they're expecting. I will say that a lot of these people are actually friends outside the show. So like I can understand being like, yeah, do I want to go on a beach for a month for free with my friends? Why, why not? And might meet someone. If I was single, that doesn't seem like a horrible situation for me. Yeah, just like... And you get paid. Kinda. Okay, next. Anna. Blonde Anna who James dumped. Yeah, huh, whatever. Yeah, it's a, I think it's another loss. She thought she was like going to do some like reputation damage control, but she just came off looking bad once again. Yeah. Also, it, she just was. I think. I think it sucks for the people that come in at the end. Like you don't have enough time to do anything. Yeah. And J- I think James dumping you like that. Bad luck. That's got to sting. I don't think it's a good look. No. Okay, James. On that note, I think this is a win for James. Didn't yeah. think about him at all. He got a best friend. He seemed to be like nice guy. Charge. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Win. No one said anything bad about him. Yeah. Um, Ed, <laughs> uh, I guess I think it's a positive. I think a win because the way he ended Tasha's is that when he left Tasha's season, right? Yeah. I don't remember it being good because him and Bennett got him and Bennett got into it with Blake. Um, I don't remember who it was. They got into it with someone, and he didn't look great. Was I it with he, Chasen? Was it because Chasen said the smoke show thing? Was it? Oh, maybe it was Chasen. It was someone. They got in, they got into it with someone, and he didn't come across looking great. And I thought he was really funny. I was. I also thought it was like nice, like that he was 
I like my first initial thought was like, oh, that's so nice that Ed is going to like make McKenna feel good. And then I was like, oh God, that really sucks for Natasha. So like, I don't really know how I feel about it overall, but I think he came across nice and funny, which is better than how he left his, his season. Yeah. I agree. Definitely worth it. However, I also think he underperformed. Like when I watched The Bachelorette last summer or la- whenever it was last winter, I was like, Ed is destined for paradise. He's going to crush like paradise is made for someone like him. And so I, I feel like we should have gotten more, but we did not Next, McKenna. Obviously a loss. I mean, what an embarrassing situation for her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I will I will give her this. It was a no win situation. No. It's mean to send people in that late. Like, what's yeah. the point? Yeah. Who it doesn't matter who you are, it's not gonna go well. There's some structural problems with paradise that they really need to address. Just work on it, guys. The thing that sucks is like the first like six, seven weeks or whatever it is, or six, seven episodes are so good. Yeah, I know. And then it just sort of like falls, falls off. off a cliff. Yeah. I don't really get what happens. I mean, I do get it. They need they, to, once it gets to that cliff, they need to start, instead of adding people in, they start doing games. Yeah. Like on Love Island. Yeah. And to take people out of it and, and everything like that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. also just maybe like shorten it. Like also uh, Love Island, a good thing that they could do once they get to that cliff is have the people on the island vote each other off. Yes, absolutely. Like on Survivor. It's yeah. great. Um, I think when they when Wells said it's our fifth and final rose ceremony, I was shocked. I was like, wow, only five rose ceremonies. And like, this has been going on for almost two months. What a long ass show. <laughs> All right. Next, Serena C. She was on the beginning. Oh, didn't didn't um, get a lot of action. Uh, wash. I need to know how much she got paid. Like if she, she's a flight attendant, right? So she's got a steady job. I hope she didn't miss out on any major earnings because if she did, then it's a loss. If she didn't, then it's a wash, as you said. Yeah. Although she like tried with Thomas. Yeah. It didn't work out. No, that's like a little eh. I kind of forgot about that. But overall, like, uh, yeah. I hope she didn't lose any money on it. That's my main note for her. More, more forgettable than anything. Yeah. Um, Chasen. L. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why? What an what an L. I mean, him and Carl, they're yeah. back and forth. So His, stupid. The, listen, let's say, let's take that out of it. The <laughs> necklace alone was <laughs> m- top three worst L's of the season. It really and was brutal. She wasn't even seen giving it back to him. I know. I know. So rough. No conversation. She just chose Ivan. Like, ultimate L. Chasen's top three L's of the season. Actually, I'm not sure if I could think of a greater one. It was pretty funny, though. The necklace. The necklace oh. should have made it into, like, the final, like, super cut at the end. What the um, The Chasen content, like, there's multiple times where there was good content. I thought it was, I mean, laugh out loud funny. But, like, for him, it wasn't people laughing with him. It was at him. So it wasn't great for him. I think that also he really, I didn't know he could go down more after his smoke show situation, but uh, somehow he did. And, yeah. And he embraced the smoke show, which was like, mm, no. <laughs> All right. Next, we have got DeMar. I think DeMar got screwed. We just didn't get to see him and he came in too late. Uh, I was going to say a wash for him because like no one's even going to remember him being on the show. I think it's unfair. I think he had more to give. Uh, I mean, he couldn't have given less. <laughs> they didn't give him a chance to give less. Blake, was it worth it? I don't even know who Blake is. Blake is the one that Tia did not choose who made her vagina oh, dance. Oh, forgot but all about Blake. It wasn't um, even worth it, though, because he made her vagina dance and yet she didn't pick him. Also, I don't remember him. So I'm going to say <laughs> it's a no. I don't think it was a negative, though. Like, he didn't. I, it seemed like now that I know who he is, it seemed like he was there more for like just being there and hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that they just needed another guy with tattoos to come in. It's all I can think of. Yeah. All right. Next. Deandra. I miss Deandra. I wish she, I wish she admitted all at the end. Big it was win. More fun when she was on it. Yeah. Big win. Also like more people know who she is. She's funny on TikTok. Like I think it was a win for Deandra. She looked great. Didn't find any love, but she'll be back. Also, she was there for like a good bit. It's not like she was only there for like, she was there for a while. Yeah, she made it like two thirds or three quarters of the way through. Yeah. Next, we have Demi. 
I think this was a disastrous for Demi. All the allure is worn off. We know that people don't really like her. I don't like her. Just doesn't look good. She seemed like mean and petty too, the way she was talking about Mari. Yeah, I just don't know what her goal was. It seems like her goal would be to gain followers. And so I don't know if she did or if she didn't. So that's why that's how I would base win loss for her. I mean, I, I bet it's stagnant. I again can't check because Instagram's down. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but she's a full time influencer. It seems like that's what she goes on these shows for. So like I can't say it was an L because I don't know. I see her on TikTok still. Uh I just don't know like How's what she the doing? over I mean, she pops up, so she's in the algorithm. So she just seems happy. Yo, yeah, she seems totally fine. Okay, that's good, I guess. Like, yeah. do your thing, Demi. I don't wish ill upon her, but like, I do not want her to come back. I would like, be shocked if she doesn't come back. I just hope this is it, but we'll <laughs> we'll find out, I guess. <laughs> um, next, Jasenia. Hmm. I'm only net negative. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with wash. Okay. Why? Because I think both negative and positive things happen for her. Her breakup with Chris, negative. Um, She kind of did the same thing Piper did, but some reason is only getting like a little bit of slack for it. So that's a negative. But then she also got so much support from the cast. It kind of like erased what she did. And like, peep, I don't know. She seems like kind of like a America's sweetheart type of by uh, maybe a little bit negative, but not much. I like how she told Chris off, but the whole Chris chapter, I didn't really need to like be a part of ever again. Me either. So speaking of negative on Chris. Oh my God. Total negative. It would better not knowing Chris than to know this guy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Same with Alana. Like they just like both were like, nope, didn't need this. No. Yeah. Didn't Um, didn't need it at all. Tammy. Oh God. Negative. I don't know. Last year, I got COVID on my birthday. This year is so much worse. I have a soft spot for Tammy. I don't know what it is, but I just kind of want to like her. She was definitely portrayed as like a mean girl bully. Um, On this season? No, when she was on Peter's season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now she just sort of seemed like, you know, she got dissed. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I like Tammy as a person. Good personality. Definitely didn't come off, off as a mean girl. So like, maybe you're right. Her reputation was saved. Mm -hmm. But what actually happened to her on the season sucked. She definitely is like easier to root for now, but I don't know that it was good for her. So it depends on what she's looking for. I'm going to go ultimately positive though. Okay. (laughs) I just support Tammy. I I don't know what she wants. I I think that's why I said wash, but I don't know. We're getting to the end of this. I promise. (laughs) Alea, total negative. She didn't even get to speak. She had like zero words on the show. Yeah. Absolute embarrassment. Connor B, Mr. Ukulele. L. I hate Connor. <laughs> uh, I don't hate him, but I feel like there's been stuff that came out after the show. I just, there was nothing like he, it came across as a total L. I will say, I, I did not see him wanting Marissa. Mm. So I thought that was interesting and I like that. Uh, but like, there was. I, I, we even talked about it. Like when he, when he went after Marissa, I was like, in what world do you think that you and Marissa, like Marissa is going to keep choosing you? I know. I know. Like he, he just seems delusional, but ultimately he was just there for the attention. So like it worked. So I guess good by him, right? Like he got what he wanted. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Did he gain followers? I don't know. People, he, he got more material to make memes. If you can get memes, you're, you're in a good spot. Um, Kelsey, Mrs. Milk of Magnesia. I think positive. She was like a sad, sobby person on Peter season. And now she like at least has some goofiness to her. Yeah. I just feel like things that have happened to her on these shows, like maybe don't go on another one. Like she had the <laughs> champagne incident. Then she fainted. Like it's been a lot. Uh, she should move on from reality TV, but this would be a good note to go out on. Next, Victoria P, the one, the original person who got caught with having someone at home. L. <laughs> she was so weird. She and Chazen might be my L's of the season. Wow, that's tough. I think that's correct. Oh, she wait. just came off as really weird. Who'd you forget? Brendan. 
Like, obviously, he's the ultimate. <laughs> she just came off as super strange was the other piece of it. Yeah. Like, like she, not only did she seem, you know, she clearly was lying, did it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. But she also just seemed like a really weird person. Yes. Also, her social media activity afterwards was really weird, too. Like, what'd she do? Remember her mom posted that thing about her boob exploding or something? Oh, yeah, I forgot. She had to get her implants taken out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And she's done, like, podcast interviews where she was like, I rem- there was something Rebecca was like, wait, so did you have a boyfriend? And she essentially says yes, and she says no, but yes, at the same time. And, like, you <laughs> and, like each... She's done like maybe two or three interviews that I've seen where at the end of it, you're like, so you did. Yeah. And just at the end, she she just leaves. Like she's like, I've decided this isn't the right thing for me. I had like kind of completely forgotten about this until I was assembling the list. And I was like, that was a really underrated weird moment of this season. She's like, what I needed was right at home. Yeah. Uh, Victoria L., the queen now known as goddess. Um, I think it was positive. I think she because- looked good. Sure. But on top of that, like her showing on that season was just so bad. And like this season, she was kind of harmless. So I think that's a neg. I mean, I think it's a positive. I can't believe we're giving her a positive. I can't believe that season. She went. I mean, it was so low that all she could do was go up, but just barely. She stinks. She barely she was hanging out with CJ with that from F boy Island. They're like friends or whatever. Oh, God. (laughs) All right. On to the hosts. Little John worth it. Yeah. I love little John. Let's keep him doing the voiceovers for in perpetuity. It's great. Totally happy with little John. Uh, Titus Burgess. Wash. I like him less. I like didn't have a strong opinion, but I found the tight ass party so fucking annoying that I hold it against him. Sorry. Um, Lance Bass. Uh, loss. It's a negative. Also yeah. allowing them to use. It's going to be me. I mean, that's also a b- bad call. Um, yeah. All bad. Just like Lance, be better than this. You don't need this. Uh, Wells, the bartender. When? I mean, he's just like. Yeah, he got, he got more is, to he do. He thrives. He really does. I'm just kind of surprised he's not the permanent host, to be honest. Uh, I don't I want to be him. But permanently be on this show. I hope so. <laughs> Last, but certainly not least, Mr. David Spade. I the mean, man with whom we began it all. Ultimate win. <laughs> Ultimate win. David Spade, I miss you. I hope you're doing well. I was happy to get an update on him at the end. I just love David Spade now. Love David Spade. Also, like, following him on social. I'm like, David Spade and I, we align a lot. (laughs) You got a lot in common. Um, Callie, thank you for bearing with me through this exercise. Thanks to to all of you for bearing through this episode as well, as this episode of Paradise was a true snooze. Um, Like I said, we got Dr. Joe on Thursday. Yeah. One thing for you. Yeah. Since today was the last day of paradise, but it was three months ago. Obviously, we jump right into the bachelorette and then the bachelor. And then who knows? It seems like it's just never ending. But I would like a prediction from Ooh. you. Out of the three couples that won, or I guess you could say any couple because we know some of the couples got back together. Who do you foresee having the longest, most successful relationship off of this show? Okay. So the options are Abigail and Noah. Mm-hmm. Becca and Thomas, mm-hmm. Mari and Kenny, Riley and Marissa, Serena and Joe. Yeah. This is a great question. It, it, it comes down to Becca and Thomas and Serena and Joe in my mind. Mm, and okay. I'm going with Serena and Joe. Okay. What do you I think? Th- I feel like I was going to say Serena and Joe, but I'm going to say Becca and Thomas because they both are a little bit older too. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think they're actually taking this serious and they both have, well, I don't know. Is Becca a full-time influencer? I think she is now. Plus she's a podcast host. Oh yeah. Like, well, us. yeah. And then Thomas has a, um, he's got a job. Real job. Estate. Yeah. I, I was going to say real job, but like they're both real jobs. I didn't know what to say. More yeah. traditional job. Sure. Thomas has a more traditional job. I feel like that is kind of like a recipe more for success. success. Yeah. Similarly, Serena and Joe live in the same region of the continent, even if they're in different countries. Yeah. And also he seems like a real girlfriend guy. So I just feel like he's in, he's likes to have a girlfriend and will want to make this work for a while. I think she, I don't think they'll be together forever. And I think she'll break up with him. Like, two yeah, the, the only reason why you could see them falling apart maybe is because she's younger and 
Um, the only, the only, but the only thing that makes me think like, well, maybe, maybe it will work because I do think she takes the process seriously. Like she mm-hmm. left Thomas's season before Fantasy Suites. So I Matt's feel like season. if Matt's, sorry, <laughs> always thinking about Thomas, um, <laughs> Matt's season. So I feel like if she weren't really into Joe, she would have pieced out. So I do yeah. think that she actually She's thinks really about it. Yeah, I think that she probably is super excited to have him meet her parents, which she probably already has now at this point. But um, I do think they have a chance. But Thomas and Becca seem like maybe a little bit longer. But can't wait to see one of them. Well, no, I don't want to say that. I don't want them to break up. But (laughs) I am interested to see who is right out of me and you. Well, we'll we'll keep up with the story. Yeah. Thanks to Kai McMullen for producing this episode. And back on Thursday. Talk to you then. Adios.